everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to build our very own custom transmission tunnel. For those of you who are new to the channel, I'm working on this 1958 MGA. So the customer had previously bought an electric kit for this car and asked for me to help put it together. We're most of the way through that one. One of the things we need is we need a transmission tunnel. So for some of you that follow the channel, we do a lot of Tesla things like for the Porsche. The Tesla motor really doesn't have, I'll call it gears, it has a gear, it has a transmission, but um, you don't have to switch between gears. The MGA, however, the electric kit that they got comes with a Hyper 9 motor and its output is very similar to just a conventional motor. So meaning the RPMs, the gear ratios, the torque is very similar similar to the engine that it came with. So we actually do need gears, otherwise we wouldn't be able to start. It'd be kind of like starting in a high gear, like a highway gear, and it would be very challenging to start. Likewise, if we geared it differently, you could start fine, but then you couldn't get up to highway speed. So this one has a transmission and we need a transmission tunnel. All right, for today's sponsor, we have SyncWire, which is a portable tire inflator. Wow, that is amazing. Look at that. Not only does it look really good, that is really small. Just for reference, I have a different portable tire inflator and look at the size. I mean, this is literally like maybe like an eighth or at least like a sixth of that size. So again, which one do you rather carry around in your car? All right, so it looks like we got warranty, some instructions, charging cable. This will be a bag, I'm sure for it. That's very nice, actually. Oh, wow. These are some nice uh, valve stem covers. And then we've got uh, all the regular things that you would use with a air compressor, like something for a ball. And this will get your pressure to and from your inflator. So let's go try it out. I just noticed this, it actually has a USB output. So that means this is not only a tire inflator, but it's like a portable power bank. What's nice about this one, it actually has a place to kind of, I'll call it store. So you can just kind of have it like that and that makes it very nice. Again, this is very small in comparison to some of the other ones I've seen. So this would be very nice to have in your car. We've got a really nice, large and clear LED screen. All right, it is all ready to go. Right now it's set on car, 36 PSI. So we'll turn it on. I do like uh, this where you just screw it in as opposed to the ones where you kind of put it in and there's a lever. So this is nice. Yeah, so it says 25, so we'll go ahead and start. All right, just like that, it's done. All right, the other thing that's nice in kind of emergency situations, you press this one and you've got a light, again, a red flashing light. That's really handy in an emergency situation. So again, I think this would make a great gift or a great thing to have in your car at any time. So if you're interested in something like this, search SyncWire Portable Air Compressor at Amazon, or I'll leave a link in the video description below. All right, so I've got a new floor kit for this one. So these were kind of just temporary. And one of the things the customer wants me to do is build them a new, I'm gonna call it a transmission tunnel. This transmission is mounted to the electric motor and the transmission as well as the placement is not exactly where the old one was. So we're gonna create a new transmission tunnel, but first we kind of need to get the exact positions of the other components. Someone yeah, I was gonna say, I think that one was maybe cross-threaded. Same thing with this one. So we'll probably have to run a tap through those ones, clean it up. Look what I got. This is a whole floor package for the MGA. So as you recall, the floor is basically completely gone. So this one should replace it. So all the panels fit really well. This one just needs a slight cut out of it to fit the transmission. So we're gonna do that real quick. All right, we have placed the floorboards in place. We haven't fastened them down. They'll likely come out a couple more times. But one of the things the customers asked me to do is to fabricate a custom transmission tunnel. So something that goes all the way up here, all the way to the back panel. And that's because the transmission is not in its original place. And this is a slightly different transmission than the car came with. So everything doesn't quite fit. So here is the transmission tunnel that kind of, that he has. It's got the parking brake lever. It's got a place for the gear shifter which we've got right there. Also looks like we've got uh, some locations for some call it maintenance for the transmission. So uh, we'll kind of make some measurements, uh, see if we can make this all out of fiberglass. So I'm trying to use my new workflow, which is starting with a 3D scanner. I was able to get a pretty good scan 
From there, I was able to take that into CAD. So in CAD, I was able to model the transmission tunnel to go right around the transmission, only protrude in those parts where we really needed it. I then sliced it up in the 3D printing software and did a 3D print. All right, I just made some parts for the tunnel, so let's put them together. All right, so I think that looks pretty good. We'll go ahead and make this one piece. I also need to cut a hole for where the uh, gear shifter is gonna come out. Then we'll make this ready for some fiberglass. All right, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna join these two pieces together. So we're gonna first hot glue things in place and then we're gonna do some plastic welding. So this is all one piece now, and it looks pretty good. We can get it in and out. We're gonna go ahead and make this a nice looking plug so we can make a mold from it. Here is our plug, and in order to make it look good, we're gonna kind of skim it with a coat of drywall compound. So after that, we'll kind of smooth everything, sand it smooth, then it'll be ready to seal up to make a mold. All right, just got done sanding one coat. I'm gonna do one more in CAD when you put this like into an STL file and 3D print it. It does things into triangles. And so something that's a, a curve like this, it'll break up into like 36 segments or something. So like each one of these is a segment. So it's kind of flat in between. So we'll probably need to do a little bit more there where it's joined. I wanna do a little bit more there so it could be smoother. The other thing is the corners, they're pretty abrupt and that doesn't work super well for parts or molding. So I'm gonna do some radius features there as well. All right, it's kind of a hot day. It's 85 in the shade, but man, when you go in here, it's like 111 inside. So we've got this one set up. We're gonna do a coat of paint. I can't stay in here too long, because otherwise it's, yeah, it's like a death trap. But uh, I'm gonna put a couple coats of primer, and then that should be ready to go. I got two coats, the second coat, air pressure started going low and I forgot I've got the 3D printer plugged into or the same plug as the air compressor. So yeah, this is about what we could do. So it'll be a little rough, but we'll do some sanding and make it look good. As usual, I've spent way too much time on this plug. I've sanded and sanded and filled and sanded and sanded some more. So uh, I'm to the point where it's not perfect, but uh, it's gonna have to do. So uh, I'll go ahead and put some wax on this and start for the mold. Now has a coat of the gel coat. So we're gonna go ahead and put some fiberglass on it to make the mold. I think it looks pretty good though right now. All right, let's get to it.
all the fiberglass put on. Now, I did some big mistakes. Um, it is very warm today. And basically what I usually do is I'll coat the whole thing with a coat of resin and I'll start applying the fiberglass because it helps it stick. But basically by the time I got to one end, it was already kind of cured and I wasn't able to roll it. So it's very lumpy in some spots. We're really kind of disappointed, but hopefully it's not too bad. Hopefully we can salvage this mold and make a good part. All right, it is time to take this mold off. I'm going to be careful so I don't destroy the plug because I might need to do another mold. This one, I just think there might be enough gaps and things that might not work well. So wish me luck. So I got a feeling that the bottom and the sides are gonna come off before it'll release. So just start pulling. All right, so the plug's not in bad shape. There's maybe a touch up spot, just refasten the bottom. So if we need to, we can do that. The mold doesn't look awful, but uh, you can see here on the edges, what went wrong was typically when I do a part, I'll kind of cover the whole thing with resin because that helps the fiberglass mat to stick to it. And then you kind of dab it down and then I can roller it. Well, I chose poorly and I kind of did the whole thing with resin. And then I started over here and I put that down, dabbed it, rolled it. By the time I got over here, the resin was already setting up. And so I kind of hurried here and then by the time I tried to roll it it was already set up so I'm a big fan of the wax I tried PVA for a while that just never worked quite as well when I say that it worked but it would leave a texture on the part or on the mold so you spend so much time sanding polishing and then you get the part off and it's got the texture of the PVA people said thin it down with some water hot water spray it like this yeah it never kind of could work but I tell you just a good layer of wax parts come off great all right I did a little bit of filling and patching but now we're just gonna trim up around the sides get this thing ready to make a part. All right, got the uh, excess trimmed off. Everything's kind of filled, sanded, ready to go. So I'll put a layer of wax on this and then start the gel coat for the part. All right, just put the layer of gel coat on. Uh, we'll let it set up, take it inside, and get some fiberglass on. I just got things laid up. So here's the uh, fiberglass. And I think things went pretty well. There's one spot that I'm afraid it messed up the gel coat a little bit, but probably shouldn't be too bad. So we'll let this set up and we'll take it off and see how it looks. All right, this is set up overnight. So we're gonna go ahead and take the part out. Got it. We just trimmed up the outside. Now we're gonna get the edges nice. Still gonna use a grinder. I usually do oscillating tool because it's a lot less dust, but angle grinder makes short work of it. So we're doing outside and we're in a respirator. All right, there is the finished product all cleaned up. Yeah, so I think it looks sharp. I like it. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and put it in the car and make sure everything fits. So I did initially make it just a little bit shorter to account for some thickness. And then also just uh, if we wanna add some pads or something like that, some silicone seals. All right, I think it looks really good there in place. The client said they're gonna carpet this, so I'm not gonna get it uh, all ready for paint, sanded, primed, things like that. I'll just leave it as the gel coat. I think we've still got just a tiny bit of play, which is good. So meaning if we put some carpeting down or things, it won't bind up or have to be forced on. So I think that'll work just great. All right, we got that transmission tunnel done. It looks really good. As far as the process goes, let me tell you some of the things I would do differently. To start out with, I did a scan and then I did a 3D model and printed it, just kind of confirmed that it fit. Here's where I would have gone differently. So again, I would have scanned, I would have modeled. I think I would have done a 3D print of the mold. 
The reason why I say that is I had to take, I'll say twice as much time, one to make a plug that looks good and then to get the mold from that. And then I had to make the mold look good to then pull apart from that. So I think I would have just 3D printed the mold. That would have skipped a step. I would have saved a lot on the fiberglass and a lot of time. One other thing I would have done is the 3D printed part, I kind of made exactly how I thought the part should be. Um, and then I afterwards I added flanges and things. And again, I think if I were to do this again, I would have designed the mold and I would have designed the mold with flanges so I wouldn't have to add because I spent a lot of time trying to make those just right and so they wouldn't have an undercut and anyway that's one other thing I would have done. Fiberglass work is a little bit like welding where I will do it once every six months or every year and by the time I'm done I feel like I'm pretty proficient and then again I won't do it again for six months or a year and it's hard to kind of keep your skills and keep a high level um, if you do it infrequently. I like doing this um, it would just be helpful if I did it more often so I could get better and better. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed it. See you next time. Today, we're gonna to be doing some, what are we doing today? We have visitors in my garage. This is a different bird this time, much bigger. I don't know what the heck's happening. By the way, the garage is open. I don't know why they're not flying out. <laughs>